I am John, and tonight I want answers for the Electoral College. There's no stopping us now because we're live. John wants answers. John wants answers. Give John answers. Give John answers. John wants answers. John wants answers. Give John answers now. Check your calendar. If it says November 8th, 2012, then we're live. Did it say November 8th? Yeah. You're live. Good, good. You forgot, didn't My you? My guest tonight is Keith Statenfield. He's the host of Keith Explains, another great show on this channel. He explains a variety of topics. I do. But sometimes, or often, you lie. I do. But not tonight on this show. No, no. Uh, Wednesdays, at, Wednesdays at 8.30 is when your show is on. Cool. Good to know. You're my guest tonight because you are a news junkie, yes. history buff, yes. philosophy major. Yes. And, well, I said part of the 47%. But I don't before, think I Before I've the, the show, math. you I've denied done the math. it. If you've never seen the show before. You haven't. This is like a courtroom drama. It's not. I'm the prosecutor. My guest is the expert witness. Yes. And you at home and in the audience are the jury. And it's your job to convict or acquit the topic. Here's something I thought about. If they're the jury, they're not supposed to discuss the show during the show. They don't often discuss the show. No, no. If you're sitting next to someone on the couch, you might point out that guy with the white sweatshirt on doesn't know what he's <laughs> talking about. I'm, but, I'm assuming that's being said in countless households around the country yes. right now. I'm, you may have a point there. Yeah. Yes. But that would be illegal. Okay. If they were the jury and they would go to jail. Good thing if, they're at home. If on a their jury couch. of their own yeah. peers convicted them, which yeah. no one would. <laughs> Not if jury in the land would convict them. Sad news. Uh, Don Yeager, who's Don. executive director of On the Move. I don't know what that means, executive director. I thought he was executive producer. So the email we got sent said Maybe he's both. Um, so Don, I never met Don, but he inspired me to do this show. Wow. Without even meeting him. I never met him before. Um, he passed away at the age of 82. He was born in 1930. He saw a lot of things. He saw, like, 1930. He saw the Depression. Yes. And he saw, like, World War II. The stories he could tell. Well, not anymore. So let me tell you why, how he uh, inspired okay. my show. This will be a great story. So I've uh, volunteered here at KMVT for years, long before I had my show. For years and years, I worked on other shows. And we have this prop room in the side here. And it's full of, like, props, like rugs and chairs and tables Yes. Uh, and this desk. And this back set here is also stored there. And so whenever we do a show, I, there's a sign. You can see it now. We're zoomed in. It says, on the move property, do not touch. So as I work on other shows, I'm saying, hey, we should take that out and put it behind the set. It will be hilarious. Um, Has it turned out, in fact, to be hilarious? Well, other people didn't want to do it. They were either too respectful or too courteous or something like that. I don't or understand. they had a different definition of hilarious. Yes. Yeah. So I, I've, I've used it. And this is actually the, the back. When they actually use it on their show, I think it's actually flipped around. It was painted properly. That makes so, more sense. Yeah. Plus, you wouldn't see the sign. Yes, yes. I think they leave the sign on there all the time. So I don't know if they know I use their backdrop. Is that what you call it? Backdrop? Anyways, uh, they're louvered vanes. Because it says do not, there's nothing else in the room that says do not touch. This is the only thing that says do not touch. So I wanted to like stick it to the man. Yeah. And touch it. Yeah. So apparently Don was the man I was sticking it to. Yeah. So uh, I guess from now on I'll be sticking it to somebody else. Okay, on to good news. Or we better are, news. We did a show a few months ago on being gay. Well, you did. Yeah, you weren't there. I, uh, well, I was there. You were there. I think I was, you I was were behind snarky, camera too. You're making snarky comments from behind camera, if I recall. I thought that show was pretty good, but I was wrong. It was excellent. Wow, <laughs> excellent. And I don't. It's not just me talking. Look at this. The uh, Western Access Video Excellence people. Who am I turning this? Who can see this? Can we Man, look in? at the look at the wave on that award. There we go. See, that's, that's the WAVE Award. This is for uh, special audience, community producer for being gay, that episode. And then, not only did we win that award, we won the Documentary Issues 
community producer. That's amazing because it wasn't a documentary. It was documentary issues. Mm. Of all the categories they had, I tried to pick the ones that sounded remotely like it applied to my show. And here's an award I got recently, unrelated. This is my Apple Patent Award. And it's got like cool flow charts on it. And it doesn't say apparatus. It's got an eagle. Oh, for the United States. Patent. Yeah. And what does it say here? It's a techniques and mechanisms. I've invented wow. techniques and mechanisms. So um, we were a finalist for four shows. We did wow. a show on bone marrow, uh, being yeah. gay. We had a show on dental hygiene in the Netherlands. Yeah. What a combination. Wow. And we did a show on First Amendment. I was on Wait. that show, wasn't I? Wait, what, what, something's wrong here. Yeah. First Amendment. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I think there were four shows we submitted, and three shows were finalists. Wow. Uh, and for a total of six awards. But like two of them were competing against each other. Like, we did document, documentary issues. We had our bone marrow episode competing yeah. against our being gay episode. Wow. So we couldn't have the won. The person on that bone award. marrow episode must feel terrible. Yeah. So we went to Sacramento like uh, last month. It was uh, our, our executive producer, Brian Westfall. He's right there. Westfall. Westfall. <laughs> oh. um, we went with Loretta, our director, who is also there because her show, What's Up With That, was a finalist for an award. Yes. Uh, Stacy Tamaki came. She was the lady who was the guest on Bone Mirror episode. Wow. And then I was there. So we all went there and got the award, and it was a fabulous time. I heard you drove past the hotel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We were, maybe you should get like a Tom Tom or something. I, I was expecting a more substantial hotel. Okay. Um, I think the Tom Tom would have solved that little problem. We'll be taking your tweets. So during we, the show, we're taking them now. You can tweet us at John wants answer. Second S There's stands no for sock. The Everyone end, knows. The third S stands for suck, and that's it's gone. Yeah. Um, so you can tweet us with questions about our topic or general things you want to say about the show, and we will later on in the show discuss your tweets and get you some answers. We have a contest. If you're the first person to tweet in saying you want a promotional photo, I will autograph this for you and give you this promotional photo, autographed, signed. It'll be great. It's glossy. It's glossy. Uh, don't forget to go to johnwantsanswers.com. We can see uh, all of our old shows. And like us on Facebook. Now, our last studio show we did, I said, please like me. I was at 98 likes on Facebook. And I said, please like me. And now we're at 127 likes. 127, because uh, two reasons. Lisa Tamaraki, who is one of our executive producers, yeah. told all her friends to like me. Okay, so I got you. And then we did this episode. So the last episode we aired on KMVT was our Larry Gowan episode. We interviewed Larry Gowan of Styx. And we taped it before the Burning Man episode, but through the magic of TV, it aired later. So it wasn't live. That, was, that show was not live. And it, Good to know. I was worried that, that this show was going to be horrible, the Larry Gowan episode. So I worried so much about it. I never dreamed how good it could be. And it was excellent. It was an excellent show. If you haven't seen it, look at it. Did it win an award? Not yet. It hasn't been up. It hasn't been award how, season. How do you know it's excellent? Everyone if, has if given it high If the qualification marks. for excellent was winning awards, I think you got to wait. Everyone who has seen it has said it was like the best Larry Gowan interview ever, some people are saying. Fans of Larry Gowan are saying this. Look, look at a picture. Uh, from the, the show. It looks like we're best friends. See, there's me pointing like I always do. There's him laughing, holding a photo, a photo of me, autographed to him. He, was he the first tweeter? Uh, we had no tweets for that show. Oh. He made, he made fun of me almost the entire time. He did. And I as was, you know, I was there. That's good television. It was hilarious. Making fun of me is always good TV. Yeah. And it was a real honor for me because he's just not some guy who's rolling through town with his band sticks. I mean, he was a guy rolling through town. He was a guy rolling through town. <laughs> he was not just some guy. I have been a fan of his since I was 15 years old. Well, that's impressive. So imagine being a fan, a huge fan of this musical act. And then let's say you get to see them live. 
perform live. That's great. That's well, fantastic. Most, most musical acts perform live. Yeah. Well, you always get to see them. So imagine you get to see them live. So imagine you meet them and get their autograph. Yeah. Incredible. Imagine you get a photo with them. That's amazing. But look what I had. I had a 45-minute interview in high definition <laughs> recorded yeah, with the, the very, best lighting you can ask for. The it audio the was lighting. perfect. It wasn't the best lighting. It was great. The lighting was good, Anyways, but not the best. That was me raving about what a great time I had with Larry Gowan, Canadian music superstar. Look, at, look for him on iTunes. Okay. Um, our favorite quote from a viewer, I can't believe I am watching this. That's what Joe tweeted in one day. It is. We took a tweet and he said, I can't believe I'm watching this. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe it either. Uh, this show cannot be made possible without help from our executive producers. Lisa Tamaki, she's not here today. And Brain Westphal. Brain? Who is here today? I don't think it's Brain. No. No, I don't think so. Our first topic, finally, <sighs> 11 minutes in, the Electoral College. I went there briefly, but I dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> you got dropped out. I didn't like the, the, the core curriculum. No? No. And the professors didn't treat you nice? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we had an election on Tuesday. We did. And, and by we, we mean Americans. Americans. If you're watching this in Canada, and, and I assume at least a third of those Facebook <laughs> likes are from Canadians. Probably. Um, now, I drew a line to, like, vote for a president. But if you, the and way it boils president. down to it, I'm not actually voting for president. No, There's no, you're other, in California. You're not even voting for president. I'm electing other people to vote for president for me. You're directing, directing. how other people will vote. Not just that. Aren't I actually voting for the, the actual people who are I voting? I think in California you're not. Some states you actually are voting for other people who will then go on and be electors. But in California, you're directing how California's electors will vote. Really? Yeah. How many electors are there? Uh, there are 538 electors. 538? Currently. Now, where does that number come from? Uh, there's one elector for every member of Congress. Uh huh. So every representative, 435, every 435. senator, 100. Uh -huh. And then sometime in the 60s or 70s, they gave the District of Columbia three electors. Oh, so they got a pretty good number of electors. Since well, they have the same number as North Dakota. Is the population of North Dakota much less? smaller than the District of Columbia? Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Um, did you see that? In D.C., they voted 91% Obama. They did, that yeah. That was kind of crazy. Uh, is that because everyone who works for Obama happens to live there? No, no. no. Well, How do you explain most that? Most of them live in Virginia. Oh. oh. Or the White House. Okay. So I guess people who live I in mean, the city. I mean, President Obama didn't even vote in Washington, D.C. Yeah. He and Michelle still vote in Illinois. Registered. But he hasn't lived there for a while. Is he like a dual residency? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, most states are all or nothing. Yes. So let's pretend, you know, Minnesota. I have no idea how they voted. Let's say they voted 51% Obama, 49% Romney. Yeah. So then when the electors for that state, when they vote, they vote all yes. Obama. They don't just vote all or nothing. 51%. They vote all Obama. Correct. So that's why when I'm watching the returns, like, it's always very close, like 51 to 49, close. or like 52. But then in the end, when they have, they tie up the electoral votes, it looks like a landslide. Well, sometimes. I think uh, four years ago, they had 270 electoral votes to win. And I think Joe Obama had like 360, was it? Uh, it was a little higher than this year, I don't remember. But yeah. if you go back to 2000, George W. Bush got 271 electoral votes. Wow, that's just, just one yeah. more than he needed. Yeah. Let's say, so the president needs 270 yes. to win. Let's say. Vice president also. He gets 269. Yeah. Let's say his competitor also gets 269. And some like independent or green or libertarian gets the other ones. Okay. Um, what happens in a tie? 
with no one gets 270. Um, well, one of two things could happen. First of all, when the Electoral College people actually got together, one of them, if it were actually that close, would probably change their vote. Can they do that? Um, there are penalties, but they can do it. Is it penalties some include states, jail time or just uh, a bad... I think bad some states have... I mean, I don't think... I'm not sure if there are jail time any of them, but <laughs> there are somewhat significant penalties in some states, but you could still do it. The electors are free to vote for whoever they want to. Now, in practice, that's probably not going to happen because most of the electors are chosen to be very in favor of the particular candidates they're electors for. Uh, but there have been a few occasions when electors didn't vote for the person that they mm -hmm. were permitted to vote for. Uh, it's never tipped an election, but if it ever came down to 269 to 269, uh, it's very possible that one or more electors would vote otherwise and tip it. Uh, in part, you could think one of those other two electors, you know, the two that were for some other candidate, mm -hmm. they might be willing to vote for one of the two. Okay. Um, right. But assuming that didn't happen, then January 6th, when Congress assembled in joint session, they would bring all the votes out, they would open each envelope, they would count it for formalities because everyone knew what the numbers were. This should be a surprise, right? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> um, and then they would say, look, no one has received an absolute majority of the electoral votes necessary. And then the House would immediately adjourn and go look at the top three vote getters, mm -hmm. and they would have to pick one of those three people to be president. Meanwhile, the Senate would go off and look at the top two vote getters, and they would have to pick one of those two people to be vice president. Interesting. So then, if the House is controlled by Republicans, like it is today, yes, they would most likely vote to elect the Republican candidate. They would. And the Senate would have a vice president that was Democratic. Uh, then the Senate right. may or may not vote for a person of the opposite party, and right. you could have a president and vice president of opposite party. Wow. Which you, early in the history of the country, we did. I early remember, in the history of the country, the person who got the most electoral votes was president. Mm -hmm. The person who got the second most electoral votes was vice president. So often you had opposing parties. Almost always. Yeah. Well, I mean, the parties weren't, the country wasn't as evenly divided into parties, mm -hmm. um, but was, often you had bitter enemies. Two dudes who were running against each other. And vice president. And said, this guy will kill your baby if you vote for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we amended the Constitution so that presidents and vice presidents ran together. Yeah. So when it gets along more. I thought, like in California, for example, I thought the... Democratic Party would say, here's 55 people who we want to be the electors. Yeah. And then the other party would say, here's 55 people we want to be electors. And then whoever, depending on the outcome of the vote, they chose the Democratic electors or the Republican electors. Isn't that how it works? Uh, the parties provide lists. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on what the popular vote of the state is, that controls what list is picked. Okay. But in the presidential election in California, I don't believe you are voting for anyone in particular on that list. You don't vote now, electors. In the primary, yeah. you are voting for a particular delegate who goes to the Democratic convention or the Republican convention. But in the general election, you're mm -hmm. voting for the slate of electors as decided by the state. Okay. We have to stop for a break now. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the Electoral College. We're going to take your tweets, and it's Keith and John get it on. So come right back. Yeah. You want to find out what that is this, this month. We're clear. Okay. I kind of okay. want to find out what it is this month. <laughs> it's going to be great. You'll love okay, it. you said that twice now, and it has it is, it is failed to be great. You don't think? Well, the, the handwriting. That one was great. That one was great, I admit. Which one, the weigh-in? The one I won. The one you won, the weigh-in. That was surprising. Upside down your shirt. Okay. Are you looking unkept? Okay. How do I look? You, you look fine. We should do a PSA or something during this time we have. We're still rolling Aren't tape. Aren't they showing PSAs? Well, they're showing PSAs now. We can record another PSA now wow, to show so later. We can take a break 
and during the break you could see us. That would be fabulous. Yeah. Wow, we should totally do that. What were you afraid of losing back? You afraid of dying? Yeah, what can we talk about? Wearing different clothing. People would get confused and they'd write in. <laughs> I don't think people would get confused. No? I don't think people watch. So I think people watch a lot and uh, they get very upset when there's no continuity. Wow, like, that's really what you think. Why is John wearing a sweatshirt this time? He wasn't wearing a sweatshirt last time. Do we have any tweets? I don't know. We that's really your job. Be, uh, I'm watching this. Oh, a guy named Jim Murphy tweeted. What PSAs do we show, by the way? Um, usually the station just picks them and just rolls them. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it's like... I hope it's not for anything embarrassing. Don't forget to vote. I bet it's like, you know, don't forget to vote because they still like have old PSAs wow. in the hopper. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're coming back from break in five, four, three, two. And we're back. And we're taking your tweets. So we have uh, three here. Uh, Doc Doxiadis says, did John say he got an award for being gay? Yes. I won two awards for being gay. And my guest who's on the show, Armando, uh, he's been gay all his life, and as far as I know, he has not yet got an award for being gay. <laughs> he must be so sad. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've been gay for only a few weeks now, and already you're winning awards. Well, I'm not, I've never said I, I am gay. I got an award for my show, Being Gay. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Jim Murphy says, followed you. Thank you for following me. And then he says, uh, are we getting to this electricity? Tutorial college thing is soon. I need to go to bed soon. Oh, yeah, we, we got to it. We got to it and we started. Sorry, I have no question. Keith is a master of the material. I am. Great guest. Great guest. It's not award winning, though. Yeah. Okay. So, that's our tweets. No one took the, uh, the headshot this time. Yet. Okay. We, we can give it to Jim Murphy. I bet he'd like it. He, oh, if he wanted one, he would have said, I want a headshot. Maybe he got confused because he's sleepy. No. <laughs> There's always a chance room next, next month. Um, okay, so what have I not asked you yet? Most states are all or nothing, but two are not. Correct. Which ones? Nebraska and Maine. Yes. So they divide it up based By on... the congressional district. And then yeah. the overall winner of the state gets the two that belong to the senators. Is there an actual college people go to? No. They don't even get together. Why is it called a college? It's a word. It just... Well, the, like, the electors <laughs> in the state get together within yes. the state. Yes. Each state gets together uh, and they, they make break. a bunch of... They, they have to all sign the same thing over they and over. They meet and on the Monday after the second Wednesday in December. Yeah. That sounds more complicated than it needs to be. All the dates in the Constitution are that way. Okay. I mean, the election is the first Tuesday after the first Monday. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are the votes sent from the states to, to the Congress? U.S. Postal Service. Yes. Is it registered mail? Uh, I don't think it's registered. Not? It, Maybe. Can, it might be registered. Probably okay. it's registered. Probably it's registered. I yeah. mean, it's an extra buck, but we can afford it. Here's a question I had. How come I, Tuesday morning, on the way to work, I stop by the church on the corner, my yeah. voting place. I just walk in, vote, and leave. Yeah. Like in a minute or two, right? And then I see on the news, people are waiting seven hours to vote. Yeah. Why? Those states suck. They states suck? Yeah. Okay. Um, Part of it's potentially deliberate. They're trying to make it more difficult for people to vote. Really? So they under-provide polling places. They make it Why would a tedious. state not want people to vote? Um, they would like to make it easier for the people who vote the way the people in charge of who decides how you vote, want you to vote. And, and it, it's, it's been done for years. We had, there's a lot of scandal this year because they had the voter ID laws yeah. popping up around the country. Now, some of yeah. them were stroken, stricken down. Some of them were as, stricken or suspended. Uh-huh. And then others stuck around, right? Yes. Stuck, stuck. Some states do have voter ID laws. Yeah. Isn't it that interesting are how some states can say it's unconstitutional and other ones don't think so? Well, it's, the Supreme Court hasn't declared one way or the other okay. with any finality. All right. Um, 
We need to move on to Keith and John Get It On. We had the results of last month's Keith and John Get It On. Let's, uh, we had a penmanship contest. Let's see the results. We have them here. So you can see I'm the top guy. I got four votes. And then you're the bottom guy. You got three votes. So I won by 33%, you could say. No. Oh. Okay. One seventh. <laughs> like. One vote. I had one percent. You had three votes, and I had one more than that. I had well, but there were seven votes cast. Yeah. So. I want to spin this. So it looks like I had a landslide. You didn't. I'm trying to spin it. Um, I, I didn't know we were going for good penmanship. I. You just. <laughs> what did you think we were doing? It was a penmanship contest. And there should have been a good penmanship contest. I thought it was like spelling. Oh. We I think spelled everything correctly, didn't we? We can review the tapes, and I think I made it quite clear that the contest was about the... Uh, I was headed for medical school for a while, so good penmanship was actually discouraged. Is that true? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I think I might have heard that about you. Okay. Um, our new contest for November... Yes? We're doing a thing, I think, called Movember. Uh, have you heard uh, of Movember? I have. Okay. So, um, what I understand is people are growing mustaches in order to support prostate cancer and male mental health. I think they're not so actually supporting prostate cancer. Oh, they're like trying to opposite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're against prostate cancer. And apparently growing a mustache will somehow impact yeah, it's, these it's, items. It's, it's freaky. Those doctors, they're amazing. Now, I shaved Monday. Yes. I, I had a new job. I want to look good for my good, new job. Good plan. But I have not shaved since Monday, so I'm I got a little bit of a, a mustache a here. We're in standard def, so you probably can't can't see my little mustache. But here's the deal. Next show, yeah, December, yeah, we're going to then compare mustaches. Okay. So you can't shave your mustache. Oh, I can until, shave it until uh, December thirteenth. And well, we're technically, you're supposed to shave it off at the end of November. But it would mess up our show. So we're going to do it till December 13th. Okay. And we're going to compare who's got the best mustache. Have you ever had a mustache before? I think I did a road trip around the country, and yeah. I thought it would be hilarious to come back with a mustache. And how did that work out? My wife could not look at me. Yeah. And when I got home, she said, you got to shave that off right away. Yeah. Right away. But somehow. So it didn't last. Somehow, three weeks in November. <laughs> I, I'm getting things thrown at me, which I think means it's time to wrap up the show. So, tune into our next show, December 13th. You'll see us in mustaches. It'll be hilarious. Yeah, at least one of us. Uh, <laughs> I may be a landslide wind again. Yeah. If you have a new mustache. Uh, next show, December 13th. And we'll see you then. Thank you.